Hello, I'm Joe Santana, chairman of the CDO Power Circle and the creator and host of ERG Power Talk. I'm here today with Brian Vigen, co-founder and CEO of Culture HQ, for an overview of the Culture HQ software platform. Well, thanks again, Joe, for having me. Um, so we are a new startup. I mean, we've launched a couple of years ago, but diversity and inclusion is one of our, our passions of how we can help. And so today, I'm just going to go through a few different things and set the stage of sort of what we believe and how we can help you sort of create an authentic and inclusive culture. Um, so some of the things that Ingo was talking about of how you can diagnose your network, um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can actually execute and create connections that are truly meaningful and impactful. But before, before we jump into that, I think it's a good spot to start with where do things actually stand right now as far as connections go. And I think we're all on the same page here with these sort of mega trends that are impacting the way that we connect and build relationships at work. And certainly COVID-19 has disrupted all of our lives and has made us even more siloed, more distributed, more remote, and our diversity is being even more polarized. And our initiatives as DNI leaders, as ERG leaders, have to be completely redefined to match this new world that we're living in to bring people together. And you can see from all the reports from folks that the well-being of each other, I mean, it was bad before even COVID hit, but now it's even worse given our, our new social isolation. And so when we look at how are we actually communicating and how that's evolved over time, it actually provides some ironic findings. With us all being remote and virtual, we have shifted over time to these more real-time communication and live video chats, as you can see over time, where Zoom is prevalent as we are here over Zoom, you would think that this type of real-time communication would help us to be more connected than ever before, but are we actually more connected? And the answer is unfortunately not even close. I mean, there's so many reports, so many research articles, so many books that really delve into this topic, and they really underscore how disconnected we actually are, that our loneliness is at an all-time high, and people even going as far as to say that we're in the age of isolation and experiencing a crisis connection. So I think it's pretty ironic that despite us being appearing to be more connected than ever before through digital tools at work like Zoom and, and others, we actually couldn't be further from that. And what's has happened is that we've truly created this habit of forming transactional and superficial connections in this more fast paced real time nature. And this, this quote right here, I'll leave it on the screen for a second, is from this gentleman, Dan Schauble, who has a lot of, he has a really cool book, does a lot of good work and research into this whole era of connection. And I think he sums it up perfectly here, that technology has created this illusion that we're more connected, but instead we actually feel more isolated. And what we really need as humans to be at our best is this sense of authentic connection with others. Um, so for us, what does that mean? What is our vision? And really for us, it's how do we create a culture where no employee is left behind? A culture where people are deeply and authentically connected to one another. A culture where everyone's voice is seen, heard, and valued. And that's what we believe and that's what we're trying to solve. And as you look through many different historical stories of sort of what does no person left behind, what does that mean? You can see, of course, so many different stories like uh, the U.S. women's soccer team, for instance, who won two World Cups in a row, which, of course, was an incredible feat. And when you really dig into the story, to hear about these women's stories of how they came together. And there were so many different challenges and hurdles that came up throughout those years, but they were able to forge these really tight knit bonds with each other to overcome just about anything. And similarly, along the sports lines, you have the infamous miracle on ice where a team of really nobodies were sort of laughed out of the room of how the heck are they going to beat this Russian team that was so talented, so skilled, so experienced, but they were able to come together and realize each other's strengths and weaknesses and forge those tight bonds to, uh, to ultimately come out on top. And when you hey, look Brian, at the Yes, Brian, go ahead. Real, real quick, uh, sure. one of the questions that came through is uh, whether there is a difference in feeling less connected between generations of employees. Uh, is that one of the areas that you saw in some of the information that you picked up where people feel less connected? And Inga, you can jump back in if you want to on that question as well. Yeah, Inga probably has more detailed research in that we sort of have a lot of periphery research 
of the different generations. And of course, over the multi-generational uh, aspect of things, you can see certainly some, some groups like millennials are much more open and social and connecting with others. But naturally, I think in this post COVID-19 world, it's been really interesting to see how our work identities and our home identities have now blended. Yeah. And you see all different types of generations connecting and being open to that. Yeah, Inga, you, you unmuted yourself. Go, why don't you go yeah, ahead? Yeah, we, we definitely know from, from the research that the younger generation is really good and skilled and familiar with forming relationships using social media. Um, they recognize, however, that they um, are missing sometimes in authentic relationships because uh, social media can sometimes be push out um, technology rather than that real interactive sort of authentic kind of exchange. And they, they know that, they see that, they report that. Great, thank you. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good insight. Good question there. And so when you move from those, those nice stories, um, those historical memorable sporting stories and others, I mean, there's so many that you could look into. But then when you look into, from a business perspective of how teams work together, you realize the same things actually can hold true. And Google, for instance, not that I support everything Google does, but they did years of intensive analysis to understand what actually makes teams great. And they conducted this famous study called Project Aristotle, uh, which I'm happy to share after the, after the recording here, to really dig into this question of what made the perfect team. And they had so many different types of teams working together across Google to understand that. And at the end of the day, it wasn't the most skilled teams. It wasn't the teams who got work done the fastest. What it actually came down to was psychological safety, which was so interesting and kind of shocked a lot of the people that were doing the research that teams who connected more deeply in person with one another were the ones where people felt comfortable taking risks and working hard to not let any team member down. And it really empowered people to open up and connect that normally, wouldn't have, that normally would have stayed quiet and felt uncomfortable to share. So this whole notion of psychological safety is a factor and a huge factor at that um, to think about how you can build that within teams. And I think Inga touched a little bit on that earlier. Uh, yeah, as well. you, know, you know, Brian, I'm just going to jump in real quick. And my own experience, too, with work in the unconscious bias area, we tend to form relationships with people that we feel some kind of affinity toward and and as a result because we see that connection there's a higher level of trust uh toward that person than yeah. someone who feels very different from us so i would imagine that part of this is that as people get to understand who the other person is at a deeper level they 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 connect at some level of affinity, whether it's we're both parents or we're both, you know, we're both from a particular region of the world or we both went yeah. to a similar life story, even though we grew up in different countries or our parents grew up in different countries, et cetera. But once that link is formed, then trust goes up a little bit. Uh, yes. And it could be just on one thing. So I, I, I recall this project and I think a piece of that is that that trust, which ties a lot to what you're going to be talking about. So, Yes. That's so true. And I think it was interesting to see the different generations that were kind of shocked at some of this research of that when you actually got personal and shared, there was this, as part of this study, one of the, um, one of the, like the, the lead managers, he had shared that he actually had cancer and it was something that he wasn't typically comfortable sharing. Um, but he shared it with his team and this team was a little bit closed. They weren't like really open to sharing some mistakes that they had made. And then all of a sudden he had shared that story of him having cancer, which shocked everybody. But then all of a sudden everyone started opening up and connecting in more personal ways. So just one little moment of a story that of course doesn't have to be as strong as a cancer story, but um, it just goes to show that, that that sort of environment can, can really help. So what about Culture HQ? So that's sort of some context to set the stage of what we believe in. And we think that that's the power of a healthy culture and how ERGs can help. And for Culture HQ, we have a platform for DNI and ERG leaders to really help create opportunities for people to come together and build those more authentic and meaningful connections. And so we really help across these three pillars. Inclusion, of course, being one of the most important, making sure that everyone is seen and heard and feel like they belong. Connection, how do you create more connections that are meaningful with each other, which then ultimately help to empower people to be more connected to their work, their organization, and their peers around them. And then lastly, impact, 
analyzing programs and engagement and patterns to ensure that you're doing the right things that are ultimately inclusive and impactful.